loud. Boom. Yay! <laughs> and I'm going to attempt to leave the meeting and hopefully I don't show Just stick around, you. Erica. We need you. <laughs> Bye. Good luck. Bye, All right, Erica. Erica. All right, we're on our own now, people. Okay, great. So, 2020 Census Complete Count Committee. Uh, as a preliminary matter, this is Andrew Wars, Chair of the Nantucket 2020 Census Complete Count Committee. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Margareta Andrews? Yes, I'm here. Kelly Cooney? Yes, here. Thank you, Rachel Day? Here. Tom Dixon. Present. Christy Farantella. I'm here. Nancy Holmes. She's absent. She's unable to come. Okay. Peter Morrison. I'm here. And Vatsidi or Joel. I don't think they're coming. Okay. When I call your name for staff, please respond in the affirmative. Uh, Martha Turk. Here. Thank you. And Eleanor Antonetti. Present. Thank you. Uh, for potential speakers, do we have any speakers? No, I just, no? In, I had that as a placeholder just in case. Okay, so I'm going to read a brief introduction on the remote meeting. Good afternoon. This open meeting of the Nantucket 2020 Census Complete Count Committee is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020. Due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus, in order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings. And as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in publicly accessible physical locations. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order which you can find posted with agenda materials for this meeting allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will feature public comment to those members of the public that have joined the meeting via Zoom. For this meeting, the Nantucket 2020 Census Complete Count Committee is convening by video conference via Zoom app as posted on the town's website identifying how the public may join. Uh, please note that this meeting is being recorded and that all attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and to take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. All supporting materials have been provided um, to members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless I, the chair, notes otherwise. We are now turning to the first item on the agenda. Before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. I, the chair, will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will go down the line of members, inviting each by name to provide any comments, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. Further. Please remember to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in a conversation with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. Any questions? Okay, great. So we will move to our agenda. Um, the meeting is called to order with a quorum. Uh, first item is the approval of the agenda. Is there a motion? So moved. So moved. Second. Moved by Tom Dixon, seconded by Christy Farantella. So of though, for those in favor, Margareta Andrews. Aye. Tom Dixon. Aye. Peter Morrison. Aye. Rachel Day. Aye. Kelly Cooney. Aye. Christy Farantella. Aye. Chair votes aye. That's unanimous. 
Uh, next item, public comments. Are there any comments? Any members of the public? Oops, sorry, I jumped over the minutes. So I see no public comments. We're gonna go back to the approval of the minutes from February 10th, 2020. Is there a motion to approve? Uh, just quickly, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Mr. Chair, but um, Margareta and Christy were not present at that meeting, so um, we had Andrew, Rachel, Kelly, Peter, and Tom, and Nancy, who's not here. So the one you have enough of a quorum to approve, but not none of Margareta, Christy, or Vatsidi could vote on that. Okay, thank you. So one of the members who was present, is there a motion to approve? I'll make the motion. Who made it? Rachel? Uh, Rachel made the motion, thank seconded you. by? Second. Thomas? Any further discussion? All those in favor? Um, Margareta, you weren't there. Uh, Tom? Aye. Did you say Kelly was not there? Kelly was there. Okay, Kelly? Aye. Thank you. Um, Peter, yes or no? Yes. Rachel? Yes. And Christy was not there, is that what you said? Let me double check once, once again, I'm sorry. Correct, I was not there. Yes, I think Christy showed up. Yes, Christy was not there. So Margaret and Christy cannot vote. Okay, and the chair votes aye, so that matter is closed. Thank you. Um, okay, so we do not have guests. Um, we'll move to our uh, action item discussion under item seven. So the first order of business authorization approval to renew extend employment agreement with Martha Turk as part-time administrator. Um, discussion on this particular matter. Uh, I can tell you that I um, am in favor of us uh, extending that. Um, we have not used the entire amount of our authorization um, from Remain, but I do see that running out and I think it's critical that Martha stays on board till the end of this process. Uh, I also support raising her hourly um, rate. Um, and um, I think when we get to the report from her, um, we'll learn really about, you know, the, the value that she has brought to uh, the work that she's done here for us. So, I would second that, having worked very closely with her through this process through the grants. Do you want to propose a specific, right now her hourly wage is 25 an hour. Her contract runs through August of this, so August, so basically we need to figure out, it went started in November 2019 and it was originally supposed to run through August 2020. Oh, I thought it was through July. Well, that's the motion. I went back to the motion that we made in October 2019, um, but I, it may have been subsequently amended. It was, it was changed. The actual contract says through August 1st, so I am currently working without a contract. Ooh. Floating around there. Okay. In any case, okay. needs to be extended. Okay, so the contract effective date would be um, essentially the 2nd of August. And then I think, um, Martha, what do we see for timing? Um, I mean, I know it's a little bit of a moving target from what we've all been reading. Well, Maybe not so, I, not so much. It looks like the Census Bureau officially announced yesterday, late in the afternoon, that the extended response deadline um, that was approved previously, October 31, has now been pushed back to September 30th. Um, so I would imagine that there will be some sort of follow-up, wrap-up, um, reporting out um, that you would like to have um, on file um, after that 
deadline passes and I'm, you know, I'm happy to, I, I, I want, I don't know if you have to do it with a full month, but I'm glad to, you know, have you do it till the 15th of October, or the 31st of October, whatever, whatever it is. And also to just to do what needs to be done right. regardless. So. Okay. Yeah, I, I would suggest doing it through the month of October, just gives us the most latitude. It, it, if she wraps everything up and the grants are expended and we've reported out by the 15th, then there's no expenses after that. But I'd hate to have a deadline in there that precludes her finishing her work. So that would be my thought. I, I would agree with that. Any other members uh, would like to comment? Mr. Peter, I'd like to make one comment. I think it's important to assure that Martha, in her usual fashion, carefully documents the record of what happened, what could not be accomplished, uh, what we would have accomplished had it had there been the opportunity to continue on, so that if and when there is ever a future challenge to the Census Bureau, there will be a careful record that you can go forward with. I would anticipate that there will be a long line doing that, some better documented than others. So is anyone opposed? I, from our conversation so far, I think there's support to extend it through the end of October or through the month of October. I'd like to make that motion to extend Martha's contract to the end of October. I would I second. Do you, want, do you want to incorporate in that motion as we did back in October, the hourly wage? Uh, so I'll read you the motion as it was in October, if you like. Okay. Yeah. A uh, motion was made, as in fact, by Thomas Dixon and seconded that the 2020 Census Complete Count Committee has hereby approved um, hiring a temporary employee. We didn't know that it was going to be Martha at the time for up to an average of 25 hours, the base pay of $25 an hour with work period from at that time, November through August. So we would, I would say hereby approve extending the higher dates of temporary employee Martha Turk for up to an average of 25 hours. Do we keep that? at a base pay of, at an increased base pay of? So I, I think that the, um, the salary should be adjusted. I would support uh, adjusting that to $30 an hour. I don't know if any other members have feelings on that. Martha, you're on. Yeah, should, should I? Should I go away for this part of the conversation? This feels a little <laughs> awkward to me. <laughs> no, you don't have a vote. You don't have to go away. If you are you are uncomfortable, you can leave and come back. But unless you're giving sign language to anyone that we need to know about. <laughs> no, not at all. Mr. Chairman, I have a question for Martha. Martha, is twenty-five hours or an average of twenty-five hours, whatever that motion was, enough hours for you to do what you need to do? Yeah, absolutely. She's proven very efficient with her time. Then I'd like to, I'd like to make that motion, uh, extend Martha's contract to the end of October, increase the base rate pay to $30 at 20, to a tw an average of 25 hours a week. So merge that motion together with the earlier one. Is there a second? Second by Peter. Perfect. Thank you. Is there further discussion on this uh, item? I would only ask, um, I guess, of Margaret, do, you, do we have to do anything formal to the grant for altering that in any way, or is that just? We can't pay Martha through the grant, so this is coming through the town. Remain is funding the town for these right. dollars. Right, but we don't need to do anything with you or the grant, or nope. I, not you, but Remain. Okay. Okay, and this, um, and we'll treat this uh, also as retroactive back to the date of the um, of the third. Okay, so on the motion as seconded, um, I'll do a roll call. Um, Margareta? Aye. But wait, wait, hold on. Yeah. You said retroactive to the third, you meant August 2nd, right? Because I think- Well, yeah, that's a Sunday, but yeah, basically. Oh, gotcha, okay, gotcha. Margareta was yes. Uh, yep. Thomas? Aye. Kelly? Aye. Thank you, Peter? Aye. Rachel? Aye. Christy? 
Aye. Chair votes aye. That's unanimous. Thank you. Uh, next item. Thank so, you. Martha, thank you. I'm yeah. glad you're staying with us and thank you for all of your hard work. Um, could you uh, update us um, with what's going on? With all the all the all the moving targets from Washington. Yes. Um, okay. So response date now has been pushed back to September 30th, um, and that is because while the House voted to extend the reporting deadline from December 31st to April 30th, 21, the Senate never acted on that, and uh, so uh, the reporting deadline remains December 31st. And the White House um, had asked to push the reporting deadline back, I mean, the response deadline back, um, in order to give three months to uh, the Census Bureau to analyze and compile and analyze and, and prepare reports. Um, that's half the time they normally have to do that. And um, there's a big hue and cry nationally um, from a variety of organizations and entities about uh, the equity that that um, will cause in terms of the census and the concern about how that impacts representation and funding, particularly um, in areas where the hardest to count populations reside. So there's a, there's a, there's a lot going on um, in terms of that conversation. And uh, Simultaneous to all of that hubbub, um, recently I have been working with my counterpart on the vineyard um, and comparing notes and, and he's a crackerjack 20 year old guy who is just pretty incredible. And uh, um, he was telling me that he thinks that the Census Bureau is using um, a different denominator than what we had led to be to led to believe, been, been led to believe was the denominator in terms of calculating response rates. So we dug a little deeper and we decided that since neither of us were getting our questions answered very directly um, as individuals, we had a meeting with Vatsudi and um, with Achutha Rahman, who is the data guy at Mira, who's working on census stuff. And um, they, on our behalf, contacted uh, the director, the Northeast director, Jeff Baylor, the Northeast uh, Bureau director. So what we found out is that in fact, instead of using the total number of occupied year-round housing units as a denominator, the Census Bureau is using the total number of housing units on the island as the denominator. So in fact, our dismal Martha crying wolf every other minute response rate of 26% um, is 26% of 12,000 versus 26% of the approximately 4,000 that we thought. So the bottom line is that island-wide, our response rate is probably closer to 80 some odd percent, which would mean that we are leading the nation rather than, you know, you know at a practical level um, versus being last in our class. So um, that's good news. Um, it presents some challenges around messaging going forward. And because we can't have access to specific demograph demographic data um, because of Title 13, we're not really sure who's missing. What I did get, and maybe Eleanor, you could share, um, share this document on screen that I had sent. What I did get after further pressing Jeff on this is um, some information about uh, about the the housing units uh, that the figures that they're using per tract and the vacancy rate. So the housing the the, the, the HU column is the total housing units. And Andrew, you probably know how accurate this is. I, I but uh, total housing units in those areas of the island. The vacancy percentage is based on a 2018 American Community Survey. Um, and that means, you know, the 80, in the case of the town, 81.75% of those units are seasonal or business or somehow otherwise not occupied. Um, so um, if you, um, 
can scroll a little bit, um, Eleanor, down to the bottom. Um, the way I'm looking at this is that even though the vacancy rate and the self response rate, which was the furthest right number, are, you know, they're not exactly apples and apples. Um, if 15% of people in a given tract have answered the, the census, have responded to the census, and 85% of 15% of households and 85% of households are considered vacant, that's 100%. So um, even though it might not be, you know, exact to the to the household it's a close enough approximation and what's really interesting is that we've been looking at those sort of more mid-island tracts as having um oops your screen just collapsed um, um thank you um the mid-island tracts have the highest response rates the areas around the, the high school um cisco maya comet and um uh uh, Surfside Airport have the highest response rates, but ironically, so those are the areas where we have more households. More, it appears that we have more year-round households that have not responded, probably because there are more year-round households there. But um, it looks like we have maybe, you know, to put a fine, probably too fine a point on it, 564 year-round households that have not yet responded to the census. It could be more than that, but that seems to be a, a reasonable ballpark estimate. And so, um, like I said, that's all good news, but that's still, you know, 13 or 15 percent of what we think are the year-round households, the ACS number on all of the hard to count maps is 3722 and the number in the um the report that i i've looked at is that the town has is a little over 4000 so um not bad but not 100 but not 100 percent yet so i feel like we you know if we're doing this well even though the big national census map doesn't show it if we know that we're doing this well, we really, we really need to just drive home the point that everyone counts and everyone matters and everyone's voice now more than ever needs to be heard and represented. Um, so uh, I've had, Remain continued to be extremely interested in and, and generous with regard to um, the education and outreach and marketing. And, you may have seen, if you're Comcast watchers, a, a Nantucket geofenced ad on certain stations. Um, the video that Remain produced for us a couple weeks ago is now on those Comcast stations. It's on both Dreamland screens. It's, there are some Instagram and um, Google ads, um, and the content is getting out on digital platforms um, based on the market research that that they've done um, so that's all that's all good news but they're also interested in um, supporting us further as we push towards september 30th with even more of that um, and we know that we're um, just anecdotally what we know is that the non non-english speaking communities justifiably are you know fearful or not sure what you know what's what the point is or too busy or not interested there are a whole lot of reasons why people are not um people generally are not taking the census um and so uh we but we can't really specifically target without the demographic data about responses um, because it's just not available to us. So the plan going forward is to um, is to push generally through continue to use traditional media like uh, ACK FM um, and and try to get what editorial content we can in the Inquirer Mirror and uh, uh, I know this, I know lawn signs are controversial, but I've ha actually had a lot of positive feedback about them and uh, people are noticing them. They're getting moved around to different neighborhoods. Uh, I think 
people are appreciating the fact that they are in Spanish and Portuguese as well as in English. Um, and so we're going to continue to use the, those traditional means of driving home the importance of the census and you know really how it translates to everybody's personal daily experiences. Um, and then we're going to use some more digital stuff as well. Um, I have to say our, our idea of of, of uh, this Facebook challenge, you know, post, post hashtag, we all count for ACK um, and win a, win a gift card has not, it's been white, it's been pretty widely shared as far as I'm, as I can tell, but we haven't, we've had only a trickle of entries. So uh, please push it out there. Um, uh, it's on the, it's on the town's, um, it's on the town's Facebook page. Uh, and please keep, please keep driving home that message that we all count, that we all need to be heard, that we all need to, we all need to um, pull together to get the funding and representation that we need. So I am ha happy to take- Martha, I just wanted to tell you something yeah. kind of, I'm sure other people may have had this, but um, I had a text a couple of weeks ago from a friend that went to like 30 parents of our kids are in school or friends that said do the census and I don't know if she's a friend of yours or not but it was very funny I'm like oh good look at that that was cool so so well, the that's... word is out in some capacity that was that was weeks ago um I was happy to respond I did it right away but a lot of people did too for just so you know in that good. long text chain I already did it. did it in April great so well you know I, I mean I was feeling pretty pretty glum about uh about the low response and the um, abysmally slow uptick by, you know, a tenth of a percent every other day. And now I understand it better. And I feel a little silly for, for not being able to put, oh, well, I, I shouldn't say I wasn't able to put it together because frankly, I've been asking questions about this for months and um, just have not been able to, able to get a definitive answer about what we were looking at. And so now we know, um, I feel a little better, but I don't feel like it's, you know, I don't feel like it's time to, time to ease up on the, on the effort. I feel like it's, it, we're that, this close. Let's see how much closer we can get. Great. I think, I think Martha, this proves the real value of your work. Um, you know, I know Thank that, you, you know, 20% we were we were feeling you know like what's happening but this question you and I were we asked this very on in the early on in the process so I think now that we finally have the answer and I think the explanation is somewhat reasonable um, because I think their point was you know seasonal homes can convert to year-round so exactly. that's the importance of and, and you did a, a response today, thank you for that, uh, to a seasonal owner explaining why it's important for them to follow through and list the property as vacant. So. Well, I, I, do, wanna, I do wanna say, yes, that's important. It's important that the Census Bureau knows um, what's happening. But, um, and you know, Peter through the Civic League has done some great work in trying to spread that word too. But, which is which is why some of these some of the some of my estimates are are fuzzy because I don't know how many seasonal residents have actually have actually responded. I can't imagine that the vast majority are not year-round residents, but I but I just I don't know that. So um, it's important, but if it's if it's you know haphazard, then it and and it doesn't really help us know exactly where we stand. You know. Um, if we can make the assumption, if we can make the assumption now that the vast majority of responses are from your own households, we don't necessarily know that we can do that in two weeks. If we, we can, well, we can do that, always do that, but we just don't know what the differential will be. So, um, I, I also want to say that uh, it does make sense to me. Of course, things can change. So, one of the, my main messages. What, as I wrote to that woman, Andrew, is that, and if you if your house was vacant as of April 1st, and if it's a seasonally occupied home, if you happen to have had a winter tenant, please get them to complete the census, for, you know, because that, that helps. Mm -hmm. 
their response doesn't doesn't give us anything in terms of added value in terms of representation or, or money but it but if they have a, had a winter tenant there then then we need to know that martha could you send me that email you sent to that person because i have had this question from a lot of summer residents and i, I have actually think known. that i slide copied you on it this morning i will I'll i have a check i have it I'll thank it. you or I'll, or I'll send it again but i think i blind copied you but i'm not sure can I ask um, members of the committee, do, do have people, have you heard from anybody who has not filled out the census? Have you get any feedback from people who say, I'm not filling it out or, you know, I'm not doing it? Anybody? No. I, I mean, I've had some people who, uh, for example, um, in my dentist office, I had a, a young woman who is, you know, who was re reluctant, who felt scared, not going to do it. Um, what really worked with her, surprisingly, is messaging from her ch her child from school. So where her children would come home and say, "Mom, did you do that census yet? We talked about it in school." So that I thought was really helpful. Um, I'm still hearing from people who, again, are fearful, you know, feel like the information would be shared by ICE, would be shared, you know, despite, you know, the, you know, the law that says otherwise and our own representations. But I am, and I, I'm not sure if we'll ever be able to overcome that, but that that's what I'm hearing as a reason why people, you know, aren't have decided not to respond. Um, the only other sort of category anecdotally that I can share is people who are, who had gotten the American, what is it, the American Century survey and felt that they had already done it or the town survey and felt that it, they had already done it. Yeah. So there was that sort of group that was confused. So and again, I don't know how many are left of those people, but. Um, the only thing I had gotten was I had a couple questions, um, one from somebody that I, I know very well and somebody else that was a friend of theirs that felt the same way was that they were renting. So it did come to them in the homeowner's name. So they didn't open it because it wasn't their mail, which is appropriate. Um, but they didn't realize as well that it was um, like them who was being counted. They thought it was just the, the homeowner. So they had sent it to the homeowner and stuff like that. So I got a, a little bit of that. Um, and so there was a few of them that say, oh, well, you know, I know this person that's renting there too. And they saw one and this one and that one. And I said, well, have them get in touch with the landlord. And that way you can fill it out appropriately or have them just give you the key so that if you don't want to give them all the information, you can fill it out for that property. Because if you're renting year round, you would be counted. Um, that was the only thing I got, and that was maybe, I mean, my sense of time right now is completely out the window, I want to say. It was about two months ago, but, um, and that I haven't gotten anything else, but that was all. And that was a little bit after the school had added into their news blast as well. So I think the school partnering, partnering with this and providing that information in both languages was really helpful, too. And a lot of renters get their mail through P.O. boxes, so that makes sense. Yeah. And then the few that do have the mailboxes, it would come in the homeowner's name, not there. So of course they wouldn't open it, like, right, you know? So. Right, and just, just to clarify, all census mail level communication um, was going just to residences that receive mail at their street address until, um, until uh, the update leave uh, process began. That Census Bureau speak for Census employees going door to door to drop off those forms. Um, but it is, you know, of course it's in the homeowner's name because, of course it is. But it, and then and of course a renter would say, "Oh, this isn't for me," because of course they wouldn't. Um, but that was why we were stressing, you know, if you didn't get if you didn't get a form or you didn't get a census ID number, it doesn't matter. You can use your street address to to uh, complete complete the census. But thank you for sharing that, Rachel, because I think hopefully they went away and did what you suggested and 
told their friends to do that too. So it's good. Yeah, they didn't, they didn't realize they could go online and do that. Use yeah. the pin from, or the code from the homeowner or just enter their own street address. Yeah. And I, I told them, you know, even if four of you do it for the same address, they'll they have a way to compile that. So they felt better and then I showed them how to do it. So they were good. But yeah, I'm sure that there wasn't the only people that might have had that. So this may be this may be a case where, you know, where technology is actually working against the process rather than making it easier. Um, sort of at a, at a very, very large scale. I mean, in the old days, you got a form, you filled it out, you didn't fill it out, somebody came and knocked on your door and you filled it out with them or, or not, um, but it was pretty straightforward. And I think, you know, as easy as it is to, to complete it online, it's all, you know, there are all kinds of issues around um, access and, uh, um, you know, and, and information and, just all kinds of issues so we'll see I, I you know i think i think overall um that the census count uh is not going to be as useful a body of information from this year as it might be for a host of reasons if i could just jump in with a couple of comments um i'm very encouraged by what you discovered here martha and i think you've gone about 50 percent of the way to deserving to receive a master's degree in applied demography because as Andrew I'm sure will agree uh, you have to approach these kind of data with a with a healthy dose of suspicion I won't go into any of the details but I, I, I do think that you know a simple way of understanding what's going on here is that uh, dwelling units don't respond as the Census Bureau keeps track of things people respond so the non-responding dwelling units are very likely to be the ones that haven't had an owner there and haven't had an occupant who's paid any attention to uh, what didn't come in the mail in a mailbox or might have been dropped on a front porch and had they filled it out would not have claimed residence here anyhow. So I think we're probably, I, I think there's reason to think that we're in, we're in good shape and that leads me to an important kind of suggestion, which is that um, I think we, it, it, I, I don't know if I go over the 80% response rate, but we seem to be doing a good job. And I think what it means is we're going to home stretch and we are perhaps persuading segments of the population that for one reason or another have not yet responded or were too lazy to respond or haven't gotten around to responding or are fearful of responding. Uh, I know with the Civic League, uh, when we put out the word to all our association's presidents and they put out the word to all their members, I got uh, quite a few people who said, how is it that I respond for my seasonal residents? You know, tell me exactly how. And I had to send them Martha's instructions and just say, just tell them that there's a dwelling unit there. Um, and I've also got, I have anecdotal information. One of the most encouraging was and I was told by my landscaper, Jifko, whose last name I can't pronounce, but is one of the founding Bulgarian residents of Nantucket. I said, so have you been getting the word out to the Bulgarian community? And he said, there isn't a single Bulgarian on this island who has not answered the census. He said, you are gonna see a lot of Bulgarians counted in the census. So I, I think just getting the word out and working at this point, if there's any way through some of the faith communities where I've had one or two contacts where someone has said, can you tell me how you're supposed to respond? Because Father X, I'm going to go to him and tell him how he can tell the congregation to do it. And I said, here's how you do it. So any opportunity that we see like that, and I think just pushing with the advertising, just keeping at it. Uh, it looks like we are getting payoff as opposed to what seemed to be a very um, kind of disappointing metric based on all the work that Martha's done. I just found it hard to believe that we had hit a brick wall at, you know, 25 or 30 percent. So onward and upward, keep the advertising up and keep doing 
what you can interpersonally. I think if you get the word out to one person who goes to a religious meeting, that make a big difference. Thanks, Peter. Mr. Chair, may I respond to that? Sure. Uh, I, just this afternoon, um, I sent a, uh, an update to um, Frank Robinson, who is my liaison to the Interfaith Council, and uh, just sort of address the fact that, that we understand the climate's only getting tougher for our immigrant populations to consider responding to the census. And I sent it, I forwarded him a link to this toolkit that was uh, a toolkit for faith leaders that was actually compiled by uh, an interdenominal, interdenominational national faith group. Um, and so hopefully he'll continue to, to, to move that. I, it's been interesting because throughout pre COVID and even now, the um, there's a, a reluctance on the part of faith leaders to do anything that risks betraying the trust that they've built with immigrant communities. But there are a lot of other people who go to, who go to worship who are from other, com, other parts of our community as well. And I just think it's important to, to have those trusted people um, uh, really addressing why we do this and what's at stake, so. You're here. Andrew? I just, I, I'm gonna need to scoot in about five minutes. Um, okay. to, is there anything else that we need to vote on? Did we, I didn't see anything else on the agenda, but I just wanted to make sure I didn't miss anything. Nothing else to vote on, no. The other items are just placeholders. I always put them there, and I think Martha's pretty much addressed Census Bureau updates and field operations is sort of part of that, so. Okay, perfect. I'll just, I'll just scoot away when I need to. I just want to make sure. Okay, thank you. Tom? Martha, I'm just curious on your conversations with Keith Chattanover, your counterpart in the vineyard, um, how do they feel like they're doing given these new calculations in they, comparison with they us? Feel pretty they feel pretty great. And, you know, we, I have to say that, that I was sort of beating my head against the wall trying to wrap my, wrap my brain around the numbers. And what Keith said is, is that he looked at the response rates for Gosnell, that he knows exactly how, how, he knows exactly who lives there, and he knows how many houses are there, and who's there year round, and who isn't, and it was completely out of whack. And that led him to, to believe that, um, that they were using this much larger denominator. And so he asked our new partnership specialist, uh, who was for the Cape and Islands, and she, she told him that in fact, they use all households. But I was really quite clear in my mind that since that hard to count map said there were 3,700 occupied households on Nantucket, that that was the denominator. And he had been clear for the same reason. And so uh, I, I credit him for being able to do the math with his much younger brain, much better than I could, and to be able to make a case in um, in a way that reflected both of our concerns. So yes, he's he's feeling. They they actually came to me um, about a month ago and asked me to be part of a brainstorming session um, around strategies for them to improve their rates. And I, you know, I was honored and curious and. Glad to, glad to do that. And in the process, um, the two of us began talking more frequently and realizing that we were both tearing our hair out around getting, getting the responses that we needed in order to stop, you know, shooting in the dark. Got it. And thank you for your admin report in our packet. That was very concise, boiled down into a page and a half, um, exactly what happened. So that was a good, to hear you speak about it now really helped to uh, kind of get the bigger picture. Welcome. Thank you. All right, and, and Martha, you're sharing that with the uh, select board, right? That same report and yeah, I, 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 probably a considerably more brief version, but yes. Okay. Um, I think that there's a lot. Of, it's kind of wonky as written, so I don't want to. I don't want to too many eyes to glaze over, but I can. I'll get the message across. Um, I wanted to ask a question. Um, 
would it be helpful if I send the rest of the committee my response to this seasonal resident so that you can you can have that language? I'd be glad to do that. Yeah, I think that'd be very helpful. Okay. Yeah, I could have it. Yeah. Great. Um, Martha, do you have anything to update on the field operation? Um, I don't know if everybody knows, but there, um, I guess, Supervisor uh, John St. Laurent is here in our office um, during the time that he's uh, overseeing this. Um, do you have, have you, um, and he talked, so we have Extremely any sort of- Extremely briefly. Okay. Right. What, I, what I know is that, um, what I know is that enumerators will be starting to go out knocking door to door any day now. Um, and what's interesting about this September 30th deadline and not to be too political about this, but um, the COVID bill that is still being um, uh, debated uh, in, in the Senate, um, in that bill, there's a provision to throw a whole bunch more money so that the Census Bureau can hire more enumerators. It's it, with the idea that the more enumerators are out in the field, the better, the more complete count we'll get. And that's, you know, maybe partially true, but not entirely true. I mean, the time constraint is really rough. And so, but in the meantime, that funding is not finalized. So uh, I, I've noticed that there are signs up now, that, again, that the Census Bureau is hiring um, locally. And why I assumed that that was John's doing. I confirmed that with him the other day. I don't, I don't really know. So mid-August is when, is when those, those actual field operations are to begin. And mid-August is a loosely defined period of time. So any day. Um, and I ex imagine that means they're going to be knocking on doors of seasonal residents. So because they actually sent somebody over to Tucker Nook to drop off forms despite the fact that I explained a little bit about Tucker Nook and it was on the list so they couldn't cross it off. So. All right, great. Um, anybody with other business? Other business going once, twice? I, I have a comment. Yes, Kelly. Um, I think that the lawn, I mean, it's kind of basic, but I think the lawn signs actually work. And I, I don't know who handed them out, but I live right like uh, at the three corners of Bartlett and Surfside. So I think that'd be a good place to put one. I don't know who has them. Well, I can make sure you, I can make sure you get one if you are willing to put one at your, in, in, on your property. Well, I rent and the schools own it but I think it's really a great location right near my mailbox to put one. <laughs> Do you, I'm happy to have you, have you host one. Um, Brooke Moore who has, has been incredibly supportive and helpful. She's great um, with everything. She's just, she's frighteningly amazing. I mean, I think I'm organized and have everything figured out. And then I, then I talk to Brooke. <laughs> so, so, um, so uh, she actually has them and she is, taking primary responsibility for moving them around. So I would be um, glad to email you together and make that help facilitate making that arrangement. Okay, thanks. Thank you. And Kelly, thank you for all of your help and getting the word out through the schools too. You're it's welcome, great. we're really trying, great. thanks. Well, you know, parents hear from the school and they think it's really important so that's good it's been in all the stuff i get i have kids in two of the schools right now and i've been getting some there's a blurb about it from the superintendent and the principal yeah. so it's been good good andrew i have one question for kelly while she's on the line here uh kelly as our one ambassador to the school that i know of uh is this period in august a period of time i guess august or through september a period of time when there is any possibility in this crazy environment that I know you're facing there of at least making mention to parents that come in uh, about the census and just asking them if they've, if they've answered and if they'd like some help from the school or from you, because I think that's right a target-rich environment. We send out surveys. <laughs> 
<laughs> every two seconds. All, all the time, every two seconds. <laughs> I mean, in a normal world, maybe. But I hate to say we couldn't extend our people to help with that because we're trying to get children into the building to learn on hybrid models. And we've got a, the remote things taking our full. Our it's company. a lot. It's a lot. There is a meet and greet coming up with Mandy. Maybe that. Yeah. I mean, we send... Um, we send the mentions of it in, in emails. We send emails on weekly communications. So we've been trying to update people there. Um, but I, I mean, offering any more help, I know um, my bilingual group anyway, they're, we're, we're in the summer, we only have one person and she works overtime all the time. And when we had three people during school year, they all worked overtime all the time as well. So um, I think the best we can do is keep communicating it but I, I do think that, I don't know where the work is happening with the Family Resource Center and um, with like, well, it's hard because nothing's open, but normally yeah. like Wilbur the Barber and all those people, they're the ones who are gonna get the word out. What's the last date people can take it? September 30th. Yeah. Yep. What I was thinking is not any active engagement by any staff, but simply having a, a very tall stack of handouts so that when you have any interaction with a parent, you could say, by the way, if you haven't taken the census, this is how to do it. It's really important. Thanks. Goodbye. Uh, anything that you get in their hands. We're having contact with people because of COVID. We're trying oh. not to touch them or give them anything, but we uh, have been telling them all about it in our um, electronic updates, but we're, we're trying to limit what we even hand out. We're not, we're not handing out anymore. Understood. May, may I ask a, a, a question too of Kelly? Yes, uh, Martha, go ahead. So I've, I've noticed that there, uh, through all these listservs and, and email groups that I'm on, there are a lot of organizations, um, nonprofit organizations, uh, obviously municipalities, but a lot of schools and other entities put a, have some sort of census thing right on their homepage. I don't know if that's possible. Um, that's something you schools. can certainly ask Dr. Hallett. Logan is our webmaster, I guess you call okay. it. She's the um, secretary to the superintendent. Yep. So that would be a question to her and to um, Beth Hallett. Okay. Um, but I couldn't see why not. But that's for them, not me, to answer. That strikes me as the best route, Martha. If we could do that, even if you pick up five people, yep. it's a lot of bucks. Okay, great. Thanks. Is there any other items? If not, a motion for adjournment is in order. So moved. Second. Made by Thomas, seconded by Peter. Uh, roll call, uh, Kelly. Here. Uh, Thomas. Aye. Peter. Aye. Rachel. Aye. Christy. Aye. Chair votes aye. Thank you all very much. Thank you very much, Martha. Yeah. Appreciate all Thank that you're you. doing. Thank Thanks you. for everything, you, Martha. And Eleanor, too. Yes. And Eleanor. <laughs> and you. Everybody, Thank you yay. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Stay, Bye. stay dry. Yeah. <laughs>